Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm just going to put it all in one video today as I feel a bit tired and I don't want to have to go render all these different videos right now. And just have to say, this is an investment advice. This is just my own thoughts and opinions and I could very well be wrong. So do your own due diligence and let's check out the charts. So first I want to take a look at QQQ, which is tied to the NASDAQ. It had a fairly strong day today. It opened and then it dropped. It held the low of Thursday almost to the dot. And then the bulls bought the dip and it closed fairly strong. It didn't pass Friday's high. So we're going to keep that in check for tomorrow because could we be starting a lower daily high pattern? That's the question. So tomorrow we're going to look if we can pass the high of today or not. And if we can pass the high of today tomorrow, then we would look for continuation possibly to the upper Bollinger Band on the daily. And if not, then we would look for a pullback possibly to as low as the lows from today. We closed over the red line four day moving average showing some strength. The S&P 500. Let's take a look at SPY. SPY opened a bit higher, pulled back initially, and then it ran the rest of the day. And you could see, and I, I posted this on my Instagram, and it was right here, the price. And I'm like, oh, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to go up to the red line today because I thought the yellow line, which is the 50-day moving average, was going to be a resistance today. But lo and behold, red line proves itself once again as it tends to. So the S&P 500 opened low, SPY, and it ran all the way to the red line and a bit further to the middle daily Bollinger Band right here, which is that light turquoise kind of line in the middle. And it ran all the way there. And that's where it ended the day. So what do I think here in terms of the NASDAQ and the S&P 500? Well, I was a bit surprised that the S&P 500 showed this much strength closed above the red line and filled this gap from the other day as I thought that was a breakaway gap, but perhaps not. So I'm a little bit unsure here. Now I'd be looking for potential little bit more continuation before setting a lower daily high. I don't think it's going to run right to all time highs, but that's possible with this volume and they can just squeeze the shorts. Um, but I would look for a uh, set a lower high pull back and then decide from there. Or perhaps this is just a fake out for the bulls today and we gap down tomorrow and dump even further. I'm really not too sure, but we ended strong. And I've been quite bearish on the indexes because of the patterns. But days like today kind of throw me off of my game and make me a little bit unsure or a lot unsure about my thesis. So perhaps it's best not to trade when you're not sure. This is still what I'm looking at on QQQ and on the NASDAQ. I want to see, are, is the bulls, are the bulls going to be able to break this resistance area? And if so, then I'd lean more bullish than bearish in that case. Although, I don't know how things can just keep going up. This is just my own perspective in the, in the back. I mean, look at oil skyrocketing. I mean, it's up nearly 3% today. It's at the highest it's been in a very long time. And when oil goes up, the price of everything goes up. So that seems like a concern to me that would drive up inflation at a fairly rapid pace. And inflation, in theory, should be bad for the markets because high inflation means higher expenses for the companies, means less consumer spending power, and it typically means also higher interest rates. Now, if inflation keeps going up at the speed it's been going up recently, I mean, it would seem that it's almost a definite that the government has to raise interest rates in order to tame inflation. So that would be a big underpinning to the market, which would make me concerned but perhaps since I'm not the only one concerned about it and so many other people are, perhaps the market will keep going because sometimes when you think what everybody else thinks, then the opposite tends to happen. So I guess we shall see. I'm really not sure. I really just want to see, are the bulls going to break 
the high of this candle on the Nasdaq or are they going to break the low of this candle on the Nasdaq, which is from last Thursday, because there's the highest volume that day recently. So I want to see if the bulls are able to get past that all that volume or if the bears can take over and trap all that volume in the red. That's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm not too sure right now, but like I said, we're looking at potentially daily lower high patterns. So you want to see if today's high holds as a resistance tomorrow on the Nasdaq. And if so, you could do a top fishing short opportunity with your stop loss just right above that level to protect you from your losses. You can keep your losses very small. And if it goes well, your gains can be decent. So we'll take a look at that tomorrow. Let's take a look at Bitcoin continues to show a lot of weakness. Bitcoin bulls were trying to hold this support over here, made a little bit of a bear flag, broke bearish, trading below the four day moving average. The RSI is very weak, but it's not oversold yet on the daily. We're getting a converging MACD bearish on the daily. I mean, it's clearly very weak. And like I said, this looks like a big bearish head and shoulders pattern to me on the weekly. So, so many red flags I see with Bitcoin and with crypto. We're not even oversold on the weekly yet. So we could still drop a lot before even getting oversold on the weekly. Um, the monthly, I have my target of this middle monthly Bollinger Band, which would be my next target, which is around 21 grand right now and 18 grand or so. What's the next support area I'm looking at? So it would make sense. That if we do break this $30,000 mark, our next target area to be looking at is between 18000 to 21000 is what I would be looking at. I don't think it'll just flush right there. Possibly it might go pretty fast. Um, but I do think that if it does break 30000 that would be a longer term swing target that I'd be looking at for a short. Uh, because it would trap so much volume in the red. See this huge volume? It bounced off of that volume initially. But if it gets below that point, the amount of money sitting in the red is going to be massive. And that's what's happening with a lot of these other cryptos right now. Doge broke that point. And it's breaking below the weekly middle Bollinger Band, showing a lot of weakness. Big bearish head and shoulders like I've been talking about. And it broke bearish in the last couple of days. Trying to hold the 150 day moving average right here, the light purple line. Next target is that dark purple line, which is the 200 day moving average. If I was looking for a bounce on Doge to feel very comfortable or pretty comfortable with a bounce, because personally, I'm not too comfortable with crypto. But if you're comfortable with crypto and you would be looking for a bounce and you don't have a position right now, I think the safest spot to get into Doge would be about nine cents. This yellow line right here, the 50 week moving average that would be the target that i'd be looking at for the safest spot to take a bullish position because even if even if i'm right and all these cryptos are worth zero they will still bounce and they will still do big bounces and the reason is because there's a lot of short positions against them and a lot of these guys want to take profits so they are they they do drive some demand for these coins when they want to take profits and they'll do a big rebound when that happens. So I don't think today is really capitulation yet. Bitcoin's not down nearly as much as the other coins. Bulls are really trying to hold that $30,000 mark. So that is really what they want to hold. But right now it just looks like a bear flag on the four hour. And, you know, you look at all the other times it bounced off this area. It was a quick bounce, bounce. Bounce up, bounce up, bounce up. No bounce, barely any bounce. Looks like we're making a bear flag on the four hours. So I do expect more downside in Bitcoin. We got a bit of a volume spike today, but not enough to, for me to say that, that confidently say or think that this is the bottom. I don't think this is the bottom. But then again, I'm a bear and I don't think that zero is the bottom. That's the bottom to me, zero for all of these. But anyways, let's go by the charts still exhibiting a lot of weakness, potentially bearish smack D cross over here, not even oversold yet. Potential bear flag on the four hour. And again, if Bitcoin continues dropping more than likely, all the rest of them will as well. So I shouldn't even really have to look at them. I could, but they're all very similar. Look, potential bear flag here on link as well. Ethereum, 
same thing. They all trade so similar to each other. Just some moves are just more outsized than others. So there's huge correlation. Really just keep an eye on Bitcoin. Whatever Bitcoin does, the other one should do very similar, give or take. Uh, just stronger, more stronger moves in that direction. Higher percentages. Um, big rebound today on all the blue chips. So that's that's a that's a good sign for the blue chips. Big rebound today on the blue chips, and that coincides with the Dow Jones rebounding. Um, but that's also because the Canadian dollar dropped in value a decent amount today, because the U.S. dollar went up a decent amount today. Sorry, went down. Opposite. Hmm. So Canadian stocks went up, and the dollar went up. Very good for Canadian stocks. Um, I, I think the TSX. You know, if we don't go through some major crash or recession, the TSX is probably one of the best indexes to put your money in right now because the Canadian dollar overall has been showing strength. Other than recently, the U.S. dollars did this big bounce. But as of today, I'm looking at a potential reversal on the U.S. dollar. This could be a reversal right here. It passed the high of Friday without any follow through upper wick of profit taking and big bearish engulfing candlestick. So this could be a reversal on the U.S. dollar. It's overextended on the weekly, a little bit far from the red line. We might get more of a pullback on the U.S. dollar from here. As it did get a bit overextended quickly to the upside and exhibited a bit of a short squeeze. Is it done? I guess we shall see. But ideally, if you're a U.S. dollar bull, you want to see a lower wick of buying the dip. And right now, that isn't the case. Right now, it ended pretty much at the low of the day which doesn't look so good. Dow Jones, big rebound today, past the highs of Friday, trapped a decent amount of volume in the red. I mean, if it flushed like this, I guess you would be expecting a rebound off of the 100-day moving average. Um, and that coincides with the drop in the U.S. dollar. And if you take a look, there's an inverse correlation. Look at this going up. It's almost the exact opposite of the Dow Jones. Interesting, right? So there's an inverse correlation going on between the Dow Jones and U.S. stocks. Sorry, Dow Jones and the U.S. dollar. And U.S. stocks in general tend to perform better when the U.S. dollar is a little bit weaker, weaker at least lately. Uh, at least over the last year on average. It's not always the case. Sometimes the U.S. dollar does go up and U.S. stocks go up too. And it's like it's a double whammy, double bonus if you're invested in U.S. stocks. But right now... It's a little bit of a, a game of back and forth. Whereas the Canadian dollar overall has been strong and Canadian stocks have been strong. And Canada has been a good place to put your money in the TSX. Some of the other stocks we're looking at, AMC. I mean, I just think it's dying down from here. Doesn't look too exciting. I, I don't see a squeeze coming personally. Um, looks potentially like a cup and handle, but I, I just don't see it coming. Trying to hold that four day, week, week moving average though. That's an interesting one. So I guess we shall see here. I guess what you're looking at is because it's held the low of every week, several weeks in a row. Look, this week held the low of this week. 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 And once again, and once again, and so far, once again. So once we break the weekly higher low pattern, that would most definitely be a red flag for AMC bulls i mean it's not looking too good right now the volume is dropping off we're getting a potential bearish macd cross on the daily rsi is starting to get weak not looking too strong for amc bulls um now there's a decent amount of money sitting in the red at these highs upper wick of profit taking almost every day when it gets to these levels i exercise caution there blackberry had a fake out to the downside it was this bear flag it, it broke bearish but it was a fake out to the downside, lower wick of buying the dip. Dip. It didn't fill this gap, which is a good sign. The only thing is, I'm not sure if it bottomed yet because the volume is so low. And usually a bottom would be signaled by a large volume spike, whereas there is no large volume spike here. So unless it trades here for a while and then the big boys are just slowly loading up, then I could see maybe it reversing here and holding this area as a support. Keep in mind, earnings are coming June 24. I don't know if it's in the morning or after the markets close, but that is definitely a big catalyst for BlackBerry, and that is definitely going to affect the stock a decent amount. So we're going to see there 
I mean, historically, I've said before, BlackBerry hasn't performed too well on earnings. So I guess we shall see over here. Um, I don't like to gamble on earnings personally, but if you do want to gamble a little bit, I mean, I don't know if it's a good idea. I'm not recommending it, but there's definitely a lot of short positions on it. So if earnings do happen to surprise, and people are happy with their earnings, then it's probably gonna spike a decent amount because there's a lot of short positions against it. Or since there's already so many people in the red and if earnings come out and they're bad, then it might just continue to drop further and fill this gap over there. So obviously bulls are gonna wanna see good earnings. I don't like to gamble on earnings. You do what you wish there, but we had this fake out here weekly looks interesting is this a bull flag i don't know the upper wicks are too big this candle is too big but it is possible uh the red line on the weekly is 1344 so it could potentially rebound to that area on the us dollar the us blackberry version thinkific potential bull flag here but not looking too strong on the weekly can we get a cup and handle here on Thinkific? That's the question. Can this be making a cup and a handle? And this could go higher. Thinkific is the site that I made my course on. And it's a really great platform where you can make your site, your course, and it just has so many features and I really like it. So I do think it could be a good investment for the long term, but that's not a recommendation. I'm just saying my thoughts. Um, it's a little bit pricey for the company though. It's worth like 1.3 billion and their revenue right now per year. I think it's only... I don't know if I'm not mistaken, 30, 40 million, somewhere around that mark. So it's a little bit pricey, the stock, based on their current revenues, but it does, would seem to have potential. It's a Shopify type of software business. Margins are high, recurring revenue. There's good potential there. And obviously, if you guys checked out my course and you like my course, you would see that they do have a good platform. Um, Shopify. It went further than I anticipated, but I think I mentioned this in the other video. They might make it past that all-time high, and that's the point of taking profits, and that's exactly what happened today. Suck people in, last people on the ship after they breaks that high. Big upper wick of profit taking. Big volume spike the other day. I wouldn't be surprised that the market makers put all this volume into the red, and Shopify sees more of a pullback. It was up like 5-6% today, and then a pullback, and then it's barely up. Only 0.18%. Quite a bit overextended on the weekly red line four week moving average is a decent amount behind pretty much tested the upper monthly bollinger band i would look for some consolidation or further pullback on shopify right now biddy which is inverse bitcoin uh it goes the opposite of bitcoin it was only up seven percent today which is interesting because bitcoin is down around 15 percent since friday so i called them and i'm like uh, you know, why is it, why is it up way less? And they said, because it's tied to the CME futures contracts and it's specifically the July contract. And apparently, uh, you know, and they, they swap out contracts every month and, and whatnot. And apparently the, that contract is only down around this amount. So Biddy didn't go up as much as Bitcoin went down. Like I thought it would have, or should have. But I am still, I am holding some Biddy right now. I had it from a little while back. So I'm invested in the demise of Bitcoin, which nobody believes in. I believe in. I think it's going to zero at some point. Not fast, but eventually. Um, what else? So I got a request to take a look at this ticker, Drax. I was going to do request and... and uh, charge twenty dollars to do requests not sure i'm going to continue doing that i will see um you know i might just have you guys mention some tickers to me and if i want to check them out i will but i'm going to check out this company drax which i was requested to check out this company and let's take a look at the chart now i think what my friend uh that requested to look at this ticker and this on the London exchange, by the way, what he's looking for is more of a longer term investment. So let's take a look at the long term chart. And this is the 12 month chart. Each candlestick represents one year. Now, 
this is where I would have a little bit of concerns when investing in the company because you go back all the way to 2006 and the performance hasn't been too great with the stock. It's down, you know, 15 years later and you actually lost money if you held on to the stock. So the performance of this stock hasn't been great since its inception. Now, was this the same company back then or did they just take over the ticker? That I'm not too sure. Let me take a look. Um, when this company was founded. Founded 2005. So this is the ticker. This has been the ticker since then. The st performance of the stock over the long term has not been stellar. So I would say that. Now it's had all these several inside bars on the yearly chart. It broke bearish in 2020 and now it's breaking bullish. But let's look, this is a clear resistance area at $459. And this year it hit a high of $459.60. It broke this high without much follow through at all. A little bit of an upper wick of profit taking. Um, I do not want to say whether someone should invest in a stock or not. Okay. So I'm not here to tell you, tell anybody what to do, but I would just look at this and say, the stock has not performed very well over the long term. And over the past 15 years, you would have lost money if you held on to the stock. Now, I don't know if they pay dividends or not. Let's take a look at that. They do pay dividends 4%. Um, now, what was it back then? $977 was the high. So if you did hold on and they were paying 4% dividends all the time, which I don't know if they were, you didn't lose that much money because the dividends would have saved you from this big decline in the stock or prevented too much losses. But either way, I think you would be in the red still if you held for 15 years. And obviously, that's not the best sign uh, for a stock. Uh, plus, we have a little bit of a fake out above the high. No follow through right now. It's trying to hold this red line, yearly red line, as a support area. Um, I don't think there's enough data now on the yearly to say whether it will continue this recent uptrend right now or not. I would have to look into the company more and know a lot more information about the company. But looking at the chart, I'm not a fan of the yearly chart just because 15 years of holding the stock and you would have lost money. Now the monthly chart looks okay. It's been on an uptrend recently, but this could be a little bit of a, a rising wedge over here because you have this, these upper wicks of profit taking over here. It's hit, hitting new highs without follow through and a rising wedge is a bearish pattern. So this is the whole history of the stock. Now we've had these kind of turnarounds in the stock before. So is this just another one of those that's going to lead to further de declines? That's the question here. I'm not saying it will or it won't. But I will say I'd be a little bit cautious of this rising wedge potential pattern, the upper wicks of profit taking up here, the break of resistance without any follow through and the long-term trend has been down. So that's my thoughts. This is not a buy or a sell recommendation. I just think that if I was looking at this, there's probably better opportunities in the market. You know, you look at stocks like, let's look at QQQ. It's the NASDAQ. Look at this. Okay. And this, this has Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all these guys in there that, you know, they've run the world. So this, can this perform well? Yes, but there might be a better places to keep your money and I'm, I'm not suggesting you do anything. That's just my thoughts. Um, perhaps what people may want to do is, you know, if you do already have some shares, you don't have to hold as much as you get or as much as you have, you can hold a portion just in case and sell some to secure your gains, your profits, secure your money and put that elsewhere so that you can diversify. So you don't have to sell the whole thing. 
um, and neither you, you don't have to keep it all in there either. You can keep some, sell some, whatever you're comfortable with. That's my thoughts. I hope this helped out. I'm going to end that video here. Not going to look at too many other tickers today. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I will make some more videos soon. Appreciate you all. Again, like, comment, subscribe, share. Thank you so much. Have a good night.